Welcome back to the channel. We're back working on the tractor today. We got a bunch of parts that came in and that is basically the whole rebuild for, I should say everything for the top end, but the majority of the stuff, gasket sets are in here, all the pistons, the sleeves are in here. And I think we finally figured something out here for this manifold line that was leaking. I uh, just got some compression lines made so i'll have to cut those and put them in we can start reassembling the rear end here the biggest thing that i need to do now we have a sleeve puller but i gotta try and get the blocks up in above the crank there and there's two conflicting sizes one that looks a little small one that's kind of big so i'll have to see you know kind of what that is but i really hope i don't have to pull the crank out which in doing so i'm gonna have to split the tractor and if i'm gonna do that then i need to replace main bearings probably clutch you know you're gonna have all that apart so it'd be stupid not to now i did pop off the main bearing caps uh just to kind of see what we were looking at as far as where and ultimately they they don't really look bad at all. They look fine. I'm sure I can reuse them. So I probably will if I can. I'm going to let them off for the time being right now and see if I can get the blocks, the block up in to see if I can pull these sleeves. Cause that's, that's kind of where we're at at this point. I need to get all these sleeves pulled out and hone the cylinders, get them cleaned up. And then we can install the new, the new cylinders or the new sleeves, I should say. So these are the two blocks this is 95 to 100 millimeters. And I think this one is 85 to 90. So these two are really close. So hopefully one of these will work to pull it out. So here's one of the cylinder kits. They do have these pre-assembled. The pistons are already in here. So here's a brand new sleeve with pistons. Everything's in there. So very nice, new, shiny compared to what we have here. I'm going to try to, and we can turn the crank the entire way, you know, the whole way around that way we can get the block up in here. Like, I think we'll start with cylinder one, see if we can pop that one out. There's probably different ways to, to get these sleeves out. Some people might just chisel them out. I'm not going to do that. I think this smaller one's actually going to work to pull it out. But we're going to find out here very directly. It's coming slowly. So that's a plus, huge plus. This is going to be a very slow, tedious process to do all six cylinders. But it is coming. sleeve and that took entirely too long and unfortunately which I can probably hone that out but I ended up having to grind quite a bit off of that I shouldn't say quite a bit but probably thousandths of an inch off of the block and it still kind of scored the cylinder in there now it looks worse than it is because of that metal stuff down in there once you wipe that off but yeah it scored that side a little bit so we'll have to hone that definitely 
So that kind of sucks. I might have to grind that down a little bit more so it's not dragging quite as hard. Ground it down just a little bit more. And that sits on there a lot better on this one now. All these cylinders could be a little different as far as size goes. But that looks a lot better. So I think I might try that. How are we gonna be sore tomorrow? Whew. And we only have one out out of six. Oh man. Although this second one is going much faster than the first one did. Not too bad on that one. Rubbed a little bit on the sides, but didn't like gouge it or anything. A lot of that's gonna have to come off anyway when we hone, so not a huge deal there. Two down, four to go. The plus side of everything here is that everything is coming out so far. At this point, I kind of wish I'd still have the all the crank and everything. I wish I wouldn't have taken that apart as far as the main bearings, the main caps, but <coughs> I kind of wanted to make sure that those bearings weren't worn to where, you know, that I had to split the tractor and, and do that and change all that stuff. Because you'd have to split it, drop the crank and change the main bearings and do all that. And if you're gonna go through that, you might as well change the clutch and front and or yeah front seal rear seal luckily i don't think we're gonna have to do that so like i said four to go and i believe i have the i do not have the connecting rod i don't have the rod bearings yet those did not come uh, along with the thermostat and the stuff for the head did not come yet either so the valves all that stuff to redo the head i did pop out one valve and everything so far. I didn't get the valve guide out yet. I need to get a tool to do that. I think it's almost seven o'clock. I think I'm gonna try to at least get one more out. If I can get this third one out, then maybe tomorrow I can get these other three out. And then at that point, hopefully I should get the rod bearings and everything tomorrow. And if that's the case, we can start reassembling this motor and you know start putting everything back together number three that one came out really easy i shaved the block a hair more and came out a lot easier now the block's not grinding as hard on the cylinder so three down three to go 
I'm starting to feel a little bit better about all this. So I'm gonna call her quits for the night and we should have some more parts tomorrow, hopefully. And hopefully we can get the rest of these out. We got some more parts in the mail today. This should be everything that we were waiting for. Should be the valve train kit along with the rod bearings and I think a thermostat. Hey, we got some free cow tails. Kind of interesting. These came from Steiner Parts. That's kind of a first, actually. It's a bunch of valve seals, valve guides, valve springs, there's a valve. Ooh, pretty. Cool. Where we left off last night is obviously the remaining three sleeves. So we're gonna jump right into it and we're gonna remove the rest of those. Sleeves are all out. We should be done with this tool. What I'm gonna do now is take these pistons out of the sleeves. I'll see how easy they go in, but I'm guessing I'm gonna have to throw these sleeves in the freezer, get them to shrink just a little bit, and then we might be able to push them in easy. Um, obviously I have to hone these cylinders before we do anything, clean out all these grooves, get all that stuff good. But I'm guessing these are gonna have to go in the freezer. Oiled up the cylinder number one. We can start to hone this one. And this is the one that had the most scoring from our puller block. Of course, both my batteries died. Still got more honing to do. I got some more on the sides there. You can see the scoring that the block from the puller did. Not the best looking in there. Definitely not. That's the worst one for sure. The rest of them aren't near that bad. At least I don't think. But you can see the difference already. It's definitely looking better. So, but there's definitely more I gotta get off of that. It's, I don't have all that glaze off of there yet. But I need to charge some batteries. So I think for right now, I'm going to jump back here and try and clean up this block that we got some hoses for to try and fix that leak. I might have to mechanize something under the seat here and cut that a little bigger because I don't know that those are going to fit. But I need to be able to start getting some of this. And i got to clean up a lot of this junk that's up here too. There's a lot of dirt and grime and everything else. I need to get new bolts and I need to get that bolt out right there because that one snapped off. So that's probably going to require heating up this portion and then maybe I can turn that out with a pipe wrench. 
I also checked some of the lifters in here. I don't really think I have to do anything with the lifters. I don't see why I would have to replace them. It is an option, but I don't see the need. They seem okay to me. All of them are turning freely. They move freely up and down. So I don't think we have to worry about that. So you can see this bottom line is very, very bad. The goal is to, I'm gonna try and cut. I'm gonna have to, I have to replace both of them, but I'm gonna try and cut them both right up here at the block, come back. And the machine shop made them for me to offset them so I could keep this distance, but I think they're that close that I think I could keep that distance anyway, even if they were paired against each other. So don't think that would have been a huge deal, but it doesn't matter. Could have came back here further, but I think all oh, this line's good. So I'm gonna try and cut these off, clean them up, clean everything up really nice. And even like this up in here where it goes to the manifold, this is all pitted really bad. So I'm gonna probably paint that with some anti-rust paint, uh, things like that, just to try and prolong the life of it because you really can't find this whole thing anymore. You know, I could go to a junkyard and try and find it there, salvage yard, but at the end of the day, you're still gonna kind of have the same thing and you know, you gotta rip apart half the tractor just to get this out. So we'll try this and see what we can accomplish. So I'm gonna clean these lines up first and then come back here and figure out where we need to be. Cut it off. It's actually in really good shape inside as you can see but on the outside it's very much so pitted and not in the best shape so to try and get this to seal with the compression rings this has to be pretty smooth so i'm gonna have to get a higher or lower grit sandpaper something that's more abrasive more aggressive to try and really smooth that over because if I try and use it the way it is, it's not gonna, these aren't gonna seal, and then I'll just end up with more leaks and more problems. And that's kind of what we're trying to avoid. And I really hope that that's not another leak right there. Somehow what I should do is once I have everything done here, I should really pressure test this somehow with air, because Quite honestly, that looks like a leak right there. And I don't have a long enough hose for it. Go freaking figure. So after cleaning it up a little bit, that little spot right there, yeah, there you can really see it. I think that's another leak. Whether or not it goes the whole way through, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to check that. It might just be a dent or a ding in the outside. If that's the case, the fitting is gonna come basically right to that. So I'm thinking what I might try and do is I could try and solder that shut right there and then, you know, smooth that out. I'm gonna find out if that's a leak. And in the meantime, I gotta get some different sandpaper for this. So I have drill the drill charging for the, to do the honing and the cylinders. And I know that's nowhere near done. So I think I'm gonna call it for this video. And we will resume this next time. We got the valve parts, so we should be able to move forward with that. We have the sleeves in the freezer, so they shrink a little bit. So, we're getting there. We're getting to the point where we can slowly start building back up where we can start going the other way instead of tearing everything apart. So that's definitely a plus because the way the temperatures are going, we're gonna be working in the dirt sooner than later. So I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to like the video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one because we have a lot.